Hello everyone and welcome to the very back row of the grid at Spa. Now I haven't had too many options to choose from in race room this week. Other than Laguna Seca, this is the only circuit I've got experience racing on. But today we're in the ultra fast F1 style cars, which are a world of difference from the GT3s and GT4s that I'm used to. And in qualifying, I invalidated both my lap times by running wide. So as a result, we're starting 17th and dead last on the grid. Let's see how we go. Got away pretty sharply there and already we're going to make back a position, but T1 is going to be tight. And there's a few cars off to the left that just got to keep things steady around here. We've got a car on the right looking really out of shape. He might have some damage, so let's give him space. Oh, a bit too much space as I clip the grass and then we rub tyres as we head into Eau Rouge. Got really tight. Oh, and again, I almost got caught out by the lack of speed of that car and how... I managed to avoid contact there, I don't know. I mean, we had to run wide, so we'll have to take the slowdown penalty, but blimey, that couldn't have been any closer. Oh, man, I knew these cars were going to be fast and furious, but I think I've just aged about five years within the space of half a lap. That was intense. But right, let's settle down. We're actually in 11th place. We've made six places. gap now of almost two seconds behind so that's helpful don't have to worry about what's going on in my rear view mirror just at the moment we can concentrate on the car in front pretty much flat out from here on in to the end of the lap and depending on what sort of a drive we've got are we going to gain any time because incredibly We've got a sniff of a top 10 here. I certainly didn't think that was possible, starting dead last. Oh, white flags out. Someone's run wide at the chicane. So easily done. And that should give us the 10th place. It has done. And already we've opened up a gap of more than a second on that driver who was too late on the brakes going into that chicane. So yeah, great start in the first lap. We've gone from 17th and last up to 10th place. And once we get through Eau Rouge again, we might have chance to have a look at a replay. So yeah, let's begin with the start and keep your eye on the black car on the inside who's the first to move to the centre of the track. Now he's going to get clipped from behind as he goes over to try and get on the racing line right there. And then two other cars are going to follow him into the barrier. We're riding on board with him now and he gets a similar type of start to me and has to pull out to the center to get around the car in front. But then he moves over again and he just gets clipped from behind. And that's three cars going out which we were able to get around. And then we see the car on the inside of me already missing his front wing from contact in turn one. And we rub tires twice going flat out in Eau Rouge. And then it gets even closer with the car in front who was down on power. And we can see exactly how close it was when we jump back on board with me. This is a different angle. There's the contact with the first car. And again. And then last minute avoiding action and we rub tyres again. Oh, that could have been so much worse. And I probably shouldn't have been going flat out given that it was the first lap. As we watch the driver at the end of lap one run a bit wide. And that's what gifted us 10th position. So yeah, fast and frantic first lap action at Spa. I shouldn't have expected anything less. Yellow flag just come out. Can't see any reason why yet. There's no signs of any dust clouds or anything. They're still out. Oh, and there's a car out wide. So, yeah, we've gained another position. We're up to ninth now. And we seem to have got a really good drive onto this last section because we're gaining quickly on the car in eighth. Just need to be careful on the brakes not to outbreak myself. We saw a car do that a lap ago. We've made it through okay and we're right on the tail of these two in front now. 
little bit sluggish on the exit to the chicane. But we're with them. Oh, he's lost all drive coming out of turn one. And we've breezed past him. I don't know what happened there, but we're up to eighth. It looks like he's got a much better exit out of O'Rouge because he's gaining on me really quickly. He's going to have a look up the inside. I'm going to have to leave him a bit of space here. Oh, I was expecting to see him come around me, but he thought better of it. Can't say I'm not relieved. Oh, and it looks like two cars now behind me battling, so that, that might work for me. If they're going to slow each other down, I might be able to edge ahead and get a little bit more breathing room. At least I hope so. Oh, and the yellow flag out again. Are we going to gain another position here? There's a cloud of dust on the left, but I can't see any cars. Green is back out, so I think the drivers in front just might have swapped positions. Someone might have just run a little bit wide. I need to keep one eye on my rearview mirror as we come up to this chicane because I'm not confident breaking into here. And there might be a move on me. There is up the inside by two cars. Are we going to lose two positions on the same turn? No, we've only lost one. But I think the driver who did pass me, Lewis, he was two cars back. He might have passed both of us in one go. Okay, let's go back and check out the replays and see exactly how we made up those positions. And we're going to start with the yellow flag incident from a couple of laps ago. Keep your eye on this black car in front. He's going to run a little bit wide out of this turn and clip the wall. Comes back into the track, makes big contact with the car behind him. And another car also gets involved. Both of those guys were able to rejoin pretty quickly, but we did gain one position. And then T1, and I'm not quite sure what caused the car in front of me to slow down. There was no contact. He didn't run wide, but maybe he just missed his gear shift or something. But that gifted us another place, which I was able to hold on to until the end of the lap when Lewis made this incredibly brave move in between both of us on the final chicane. Watch it from his on board. He pulled this off to perfection. Breaks early, so he's in complete control. Spots the gap and threads it through with no room to spare. A fantastic pass. Yeah, it looks like Jacob behind has got some real pace now. He's almost within half a second. And I've already been done once coming up to this chicane, so I'm going to have to pay particular attention again. Might not be close enough this lap, so I think we're okay. But again, I am still very cautious through here. Lost it a couple of times in practice. And actually, we've opened up a bit of a gap on Jacob. Now it's one and a half seconds. So he obviously struggled through that chicane too. And we've got a bit of breathing room again. I think it looks like we're actually closer to Lewis again in front than we are to Jacob behind now. So this is looking a much better lap for us. Oh, I took way too much of that curb on the inside, but someone's run wide in the meantime. And Jacob's right behind us after that mistake by me. He's on the outside. Oh, and I've locked up. And there's contact. Oh, no. I got completely out of shape there. Jacob's rejoined in front of me. Oh, and I don't particularly want to go around him because I caused the contact. But it looks like he's picked up damage. 
Oh, that was my fault. Yeah, looking at the replay, I made a right mess of this turn, clipped the kerb, which cost me a lot of speed. It brought Jacob right up behind, and he makes a move around the outside. And as a result, I've got to commit to an unfamiliar line, and I completely missed my breaking point, and that's a poor mistake. And it's cost poor Jacob. Let's look at it from his view, and this is where he gained all the time as I made that mistake. But I wish I'd kept to the racing line and invited him up the inside because uh, I used the bridge and the start of the kerb as my breaking point. And being on that inside line with Jacob to the left of me, it completely threw me. And I got my breaking point perspectives all wrong. So yeah, I definitely owe Jacob a very big apology for that one. Another slight lock up of the brakes there as we headed into that hairpin. That's going to let Pratsy get another couple of tenths of a second closer. Starting to lose a bit of confidence in this car now. And yeah, Pratsy's right behind, so I'm going to veer to the left. I'm going to open up that inside gap. I don't want to make the same mistake as before. I want to let him through safely. He's clearly got more pace than me. But yeah, that's exactly what I should have done with Jacob a couple of laps ago. Certainly learnt from that mistake. And although I said Pratsy had a bit of pace on me, we're actually sticking with him here. I know we're in his draft, but he hasn't gapped us at all. Although my lack of confidence in this chicane, and I went in way too deep as well there. That might give him the opportunity to gap us, and he has. He's away. But yeah, let's look at the replay of Pratsy's pass. And I really wish that Jacob had done the same thing here and gone for the move up the inside instead. Because it just allowed me to drift over to the outside. I kept my bearings. I knew where my breaking point was. And I was able to confidently make the corner while letting him through. Oh, it looks like Pratsy got a little bit out of shape there going into La Source. And we've gained a lot of time on him. The gap's down to almost a second. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last lap. So I think we'll probably be relying on him to make another mistake. If we're going to get any closer than this. D-car behind still a second and a half back. So all okay there for the minute. Let's just concentrate on Pratsy ahead. Trying to stick with him just in case there's another mistake. Oh, I'm getting a little bit out of shape there. Oh, and another lock up with the tyres. Pratsy missed the apex there and ran really wide, but my corner was no better. So we won't have gained any time. My exit there wasn't that great either. Oh, and a bit too much of the kerb on the inside again. We're getting really ragged now. Really ragged. Oh, and that's invited D-car behind right onto Mateo. Where has he come from? He's really capitalised on my messy view corners. And he's right behind now. So we've got to be worried about D-car rather than what's going on in front of us. I want to try and hold on to this ninth position if I can. Oh, but all of a sudden he's dropped right off. I don't think he crashed, so I suspect he might have run out of fuel. Because, yeah, he's more than seven seconds back now all of a sudden. So I just need to get around the chicane in one piece. And we certainly didn't do it confidently, but we did it. And we will cross the line in ninth place. So, yeah, pretty hard fought race, that one. And although I'm happy with a ninth place finish, I've got to admit, it's a tainted ninth place after I made that mistake that put Jacob out of the race. But what does it mean for my stats? Well, despite that pretty awful error, we've actually gained some reputation and rating 
a little bit of an increase. So we're just about keeping it above that 1600 mark. And moving on to the final results and the winner, Jason Lecar, was in an absolute class of his own in this race. A fastest lap of 143.5. Now that's about four seconds quicker than what I was doing in free practice with the DRS available at every opportunity. So that's an amazing time. And as for poor old Jacob, there he is down in 13th place. And yeah, on the off chance that he ever watches this video, I feel I need to apologise for that one again because that was a very basic mistake from me. Missing my breaking point and uh, crashing into him. But I've just got to dust myself down and learn from the mistakes and uh, move on to the next one. Cheers, guys. See you soon.